I'm David Newell. I'm the minister of the Unitarian Universalist of the Chester River Church and a retired uh, philosophy and religion professor from the college. I live on Wharton Creek. I was born and raised uh, through graduation from high school in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island, in fact. And I came to Boston to go to college. And I really never went back. And this would be 1967 or so, and um, I hadn't finished my PhD, so I, um, uh, I went to Boston to the APA meetings, the American Philosophical Association. I, I was interviewed by about 35 different places back then, there were lots of jobs. And, I had five different offers, and one, and one of them was from a college called Washington College. And my reaction was, there's a Washington College in Maryland? And uh, so they interviewed me, and we made a good arrangement. And next thing you know, I was, I was here. And I wanted to be close to the University of Maryland, where my advisor was. I figured if I went to Alabama, or Nebraska, or someplace like that, I'd be out of sight, out of mind, and I wouldn't get the degree. So. That's, that was, but I also have always dreamed of living in a small town with a river running through it. <laughs> and that, this was perfect, a small college in a small town with a river. And of course, I've been very much on the water since, since I've been here. Jeffrey, our oldest son, was born a month after I started teaching at the college. And so he, his dates are the same as mine with regard to Chestertown. Uh, and Jonathan was born two years later. and. Um, the college back then was, was more community, um, I don't know how to put this, community oriented. Uh, President Gibson, who had been a uh, professor of literature, had a PhD in literature, and I was here, my first two years were his last two years, and uh, Gibson had a, an annual speech to the faculty that he gave. We would have dinner in the main dining room and um, he'd get up and make the speech and it was called his famous unpack your bag speech. And he told the faculty and staff to move in, put down roots here, live in the community, get to know the people, get to be in the town. And so he didn't want people commuting in to teach at Washington College from Annapolis and Washington and Wilmington and so on and so forth. Now that's really not possible, I guess, much anymore where you have dual career couples and one works in Washington and one wants to teach at Washington College and they uh, have to live there or here, whatever. So you have a lot more commuter marriages these what, days. What does that do to a community and what does that do to a college? Well, I think if the, I, I, I think w with the faculty living here, that, would in, that should enrich the, the, the college because you have people who have certain kinds of talents and certain knowledge bases that would contribute to the betterment of the, of the community. I'm pretty sure that's reasonable to say. You know, he didn't really say we couldn't live elsewhere, but, but he wanted us to be a part of the town and part of the community. And he, he wanted us to benefit from it and to contribute to it and, you know, become a member of the Lions and the Rotary and whatever, whatever. Uh, and he thought that was very important and that we wouldn't be in absentia all the time, you know, flitting off to other things. When we first came across the bridge in, 19, in the fall of 1968, pulled into a gas station, which was a couple of hundred yards from the bridge, uh, and uh, it was an Esso station back then. And uh, rolled the window down and the man came out and, and what do you want? And he started pumping the gas and then he starts talking to me and, and he tells me, uh, tell, to us, and he tells us that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the African Americans, and he didn't use that term, uh, had a very nice school, but they wanted our school, and so they had these protests, and they had to get, you know, mess everything up, and so on and so forth. And uh, so I got exposed to racism within 30 seconds, literally, of being in Chestertown. And uh, later that year, I went, I was in a barber shop in town, and uh, I, get, I was in the chair, and the guy was wielding these shears around my head, and uh, the, um, a, a, a black man came through the door and the, the guy just looked at him and said, we don't cut your kind of hair in here. And the man was humiliated and walked out and uh, I regret that I didn't just get up there and tear that thing off and storm out myself, but I was still young and... Under the knife. Know, under the knife, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so it was there, you know, and uh, memories of, of that are, are, are 
probably still in some people's minds. Are we totally practicing equality right now? I would doubt it, but because a certain amount of that that is difficult to, to eliminate because people gravitate toward people they know when they go to a social event, and if all the white people are over here and all the black people are over there, it may just be because that's who their friends are, you know? But I, I, think it's, I do think it's healthier now than it has been, and, and uh, I think the, the uh, races are, have more equal opportunity than they had maybe 40 years ago. My biggest concern about the community these days is the, is the number of stores that are closing down, businesses that are, that are shuttering up, and, and that means loss of jobs, and it means loss of shopping opportunities for consumers, and so on and so forth. And uh, if I had a magic wand, I think I would try to firm that up first and foremost. But, um, you know, there are other areas that could be addressed. I don't know if I should bother with uh, going into that. But I think that, uh, that that's the biggest probably problem right now. I mean, and it seems to be uh, ongoing. <laughs> These stores are closing up one after the other after the other. And the more of those that lie vacant, and there's that place down there that used to be um, Black Eyed Susan. I mean, beautiful building, I guess, but, but it's totally empty. It's never been occupied. And that's a, that makes quite a statement uh, in terms of our economic situation.